What's up, everyone? I'm Silvio Perez. I'm the founder of Ad Conversion. We teach B2B marketers how to scale paid ads for free with advertising courses taught by the world's best practitioners. In this video, I want to give you a very quick tutorial on how to install the Metapixel in six steps. So let's dive into it. Step number one is to create a Facebook ads account. So you're going to want to navigate to this article. I'll link it in the description box down below. But essentially, you want to build your Facebook ad account if you haven't for the first time. It takes less than five minutes. Just walk through this article. Step number two is we're going to want to set up our pixel as a data source here in Facebook ads. So just navigate in your Facebook ads account, go to the events manager section. You're going to find it here on the top right or on the bottom. They're always A-B testing different layouts. So if your screen looks different than mine, just look for events manager here in the menu section. Once you're here, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to click on this plus button here on the left and you're going to connect a new data source. So it's going to ask you what type of data source do you want to connect? So we want to create a web-based data source. So I'm going to click connect here. I'm going to, I'm going to name this data set. So I'm going to name it Facebook Pixel example, just for the sake of this video, but you can name it whatever you want, maybe your business name and then the pixel. So I'm going to create this. Once it's created, it's going to ask us to add this to our website URL. So go ahead and grab your URL. So in my case, it's at conversion.com. So I'm going to grab my URL. I'm going to come back here and I'm going to drop it in. And I'm going to click check. So that's it. And I'm going to click next again. Now it's going to ask us, how do we want to connect to our website? Is it going to be done via the API or the Metapixel only? For the sake of this video, we're not talking about API and offline conversions. So we'll just be doing Metapixel only. I'm going to click next. Then now it's going to ask us, how do we want to install this Facebook ads pixel? So do you want to do it manually or use a partner integration? For the sake of this demonstration, we're going to use uh, install code manually, and then we're going to do it through Google Tag Manager. So what we have to do now is we need to navigate to Google Tag Manager and install this as a custom HTML tag. So I'm going to copy this code, and I'm going to go into my Google Tag Manager account. If you don't have one, just go to tagmanager.google.com, create a free account, and then install the global snippet of Google Tag Manager on your website so you can start to deploy tags. And you're going to just click Add New Tag here. We're going to give this a name. It's important to always have proper naming conventions. So I'm going to call this Facebook pixel. And then my trigger is going to be all pages for the tag configuration. You just click on this little search bar up here and you can type custom HTML. You can also type Facebook. There are, if you go to the, like the, uh, the community gallery, there's pre-built Facebook templates, but it's not necessary. We're just going to click custom HTML. We're going to drop in our pixel code, and then I'm going to come here to triggers and I'm going to set it up to do all pages. And that's it. We have created our Facebook pixel tag. Now we're going to save it. Once we've saved it, I'm going to come back here and I'm going to click on continue. It's going to ask you if you want to turn on automatic advanced matching. In my opinion, I would absolutely do this. It's really going to help you from an attribution perspective, and it's going to really help your remarketing campaigns. I would turn it on. It's going to ask you to verify the customer information you want to send through custom audiences. Choose all the applicable ones. For me, it's usually first name and last name email and sometimes phone number, but you can always come back and, and edit these details in the future. So don't feel like it's you're doomed by the choices you make in this, in this moment, I'm going to click continue here. And then I'm just going to go to pixel overview. And now I'm going to go back to Google tag manager and let's finish setting up this tag. So you can see we've added this new tag. Now let's go ahead and preview it just to make sure that it's actually working properly. So I'm going to open up my URL here. And let's just double check that it looks good and everything's fired. I'm going to come back to tag assistant and I'm going to click on my tags here and I'm going to look for my pixel tag that I just created. So it's Facebook pixel and you can see it here on the bottom, right? Facebook pixel, all pages. And really what I want to look for here is that I don't see duplications. So I can see I have Facebook pixel here and then I have Facebook pixel here. So I have two tags firing the Facebook pixel. This is the original tag that I installed way back when I started advertising on Facebook for this account. But this is a new pixel that I created just now. So that's something to look out for. The other thing too, is you want to look out for duplicate counts in terms of fires. So you can see it said is it fired one time, which is good. I'm looking at one page load here and it fired one time, which is what we want. If it was one page load and I saw that it fired two times, three times, that's an issue. And then we should go back into our triggers and try to debug and see what's going on. If you see your, t your tag here, it says that it fired properly and it fired with a count of one, then you're all good to go. And then all we would need to do is come back to tag manager 
submit our changes. Make sure to always add your version name changes. We can say here, created Facebook pixel tag. And then I would publish this. And then now these changes would be published to my website. One last tip I want to give you here on just QA the Facebook pixel and making sure everything's okay is if you go and install this Chrome extension called Meta Pixel Helper, it can actually help you see if the Facebook pixel is installed on any active website that you're looking at. So I'm going to go ahead and refresh my page here. And with the Meta Pixel Helper, you can see it's saying that the Meta Pixel is firing on this page. And it's showing you what events are firing. So this MetaPixel Helper Chrome extension is really helpful to not only see if the pixel's firing but for other client, like clients of yours, and maybe you don't have access to the Google Tag Manager account yet, and you want to see if they got Facebook running. But in addition to that, for tracking and measuring events. So as I do certain actions on my website, if I've set up conversion events, I can see if those events have fired here with the MetaPixel Helper without having access to your Google Tag Manager or the back end of the website. Anywho, I hope this video was helpful. If you have any more questions, please feel free to drop them in the comments down below. And if you want more content around tracking and setting up the pixel, be sure to check out the playlist that this video is a part of all around getting started with B2B remarketing. And we've got this master blueprint in the description box down below where you can check out that article. I'll see you in the next one.